All right, today we're going to talk about the new D-Min in Betaflight 4.0. So the first question we need to answer is, what is D-min? What am I even talking about? So D-min is basically dynamic D-term gains in Betaflight 4.0. It's on by default. What D-min does is it suppresses the D-term gains while you're not in any fast stick moves or within prop wash. Really when you have a, a forward flight, you don't really need a lot of D-gains to keep things on track. It's only during fast stick movements to avoid overshoot as a set point comes back to zero or doing prop wash do you really need D gains and higher D gains honestly. The rest of the time the D term is a real pain in the butt. Honestly all this filtering we have to keep focusing on is all because of the D term. So what if we could just suppress the D term by lowering the gains during the non-critical parts of the flight that we don't really need a lot of D term and then whenever we do need term, D term, just boost the gains, which sounds simple in theory, but was fairly difficult to implement. Well, thanks to Chris Thompson, CTZ Snooze, and a lot of the other people in the Betaflight team, they were able to pull this together. Uh, Joe Lucid had a hand in it as well, and then there's a lot of people testing it on the Betaflight Slack. So thanks to all their efforts on this one. So you can see in the plot in front of us here, we have a normal fixed D of 30. And you can see the noise floor with the motor output. This is the signals going to the motors to command the motor's motion. And you can see it has decent overshoot, but it has a delay in initial response. So that gap there, you can see this blue line here, that is the set point moving. And then this is the actual gyro tracking that. So you can see that delay. That's what everybody talks about with stick feel. The difference between these two lines that's the PID error. So when I say about feel, and we always talk about feel, I'm like, it can be measured because the higher the PID error means the less it's really following your stick inputs. You know, there's a, there's a, gel, a delta there, a gap. So we're really trying to get that PID error to be zero all the time. And you can see there it's not. And the reason that is with a, a higher D gain as well, well, there's a couple things. First of all, inertia just in general and, and the copter's performance. But you really need to, we, we need to recognize that the D term fights the P term and feed forward, pushing the quad into a move. So in this log, you can see that. So you can see the set point right here is the dark green line. And then here's the gyro following that. Well, what's pushing that into the move? Well, you got the P term pushing that. And in my case here, I actually have feed forward set to zero, the, the feed forward gains. And, uh, but that would be pushing it as well. So P terms pushing it, feed forward would push it, but you can see the D term is fighting that. So the net result is any you know, positive that you have in the P term, for example, it's, since it's rolling to the left, it's a negative 13.4%, uh, but the D term is offsetting that by, so it's taking the you know, 13 plus 6.6, .6, and that's what's actually then going to the pit sum. So it's kind of negating some of that push that the P term is is giving the quadcopter to enter the move. And honestly, we really don't want that. We really only want the D-turn to activate to arrest any overshoot once it gets to the target uh, roll rate, or here as, as the um, motion's coming back down to zero, we need that D-turn to help arrest it so we don't have overshoot. So the next logical thing you can think of is, okay, well, what if we just have a lower D-turn? Well, here is a D-turn, fixed D-turn of 16 for the gain. And you can see the reaction and how closely it's following the set point is a lot closer here. Now this is the same exact quad, same all settings, so on and so forth. And uh, you can see that's great, but then we have this big overshoot when it hits the, you know, when it's reaching the target uh, roll rate. And we don't really want that overshoot. Uh, honestly, the overshoot down here is pretty good, so it's not really overshooting getting to zero. And that's the bounce back you would notice. But nevertheless, you are having, gonna get some more overshoots there. Also, your prop wash handling will be less responsive because D term is the first thing to react to offset prop wash. So at a 16, you're not going to get great prop wash response. So then the next question is, okay, well, can we have the D term low and then when we need it, it boosts up? And that's what this is. Now, initially it was called D cut. It's now in this release, it's called D min. So this is at a 30 as a default. 
but then it's cut down to 12 for just forward flight. When you do a sharp stick input, it activates, but it activates in a delayed fashion, so it doesn't, it doesn't uh, fight as much the quad entering the move. So you can see here, we have, that, we have a closer following of the, to the set point, however we don't have that nasty overshoot here as well so it's kind of the best of both worlds and also our motor traces if i kind of stick go through these you can see the motor trace lines are a little you know there's less noise so if you have mid throttle oscillation issues or other you know smooth flight characteristics for cinematic stuff having your d term lower during those periods so you don't have the mto issue can help a lot there as well and these two logs just another example with d min off versus d min on all the other settings the same this is with the rpm filter and you can see it just helps in smoother uh, or less amplitude in the variation of the motor signal uh, commanded motions going to the motors. To some extent, D-min really helps with filtering. You could have more aggressive D-min and then maybe let a little bit more noise through since the D-term is the one that really amplifies the noise the most. So it leaves an option there for you. As I indicated in Betaflight 4.0, D-min is on by default. Uh, once you get the new configurator 10.5, which you will see an item here. You can see here right here is D-min. Uh, it's pretty simple. These are the max values it will jump up to uh, when it's entering a high stick move or a prop wash. It will go up to you know 35, 38, which are pretty standardized uh, D term gains that we're used to seeing. However, during forward flight, we'll be down. The defaults, at least, are 20 and 22. Uh, yaw it has a zero, and then yaw is zero here as well. If you didn't want to use D min, you're just like, hey, this is too complicated. I want to get back to the basics. You can just set the 20 and 22 to zero, and it just turns off D-min altogether. So then it would just be fixed D-term of 35, 38, or whatever you input it there. So just keep that in mind. Honestly, with everything in Betaflight, there's all these new little features every time there's a major release. You can turn all this stuff off. You could turn stuff off to get back to 3.2 if you want. So it's that's always an option. So these are options. You don't have to use them. That's how you turn it off if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it. Hey, but it's there. D gains. Uh, the gain down here. Adjust how aggressive it is for the for the D term to raise. Like basically, it has to detect vibrations. In the case of prop wash, it has to detect higher frequency motion, like 20 to 60 hertz, and there has to be some sort of factor it's looking at to say, okay, when am I going to start bumping up my D term gains? And that's what the gain here is. A higher gain value will make the D term more sensitive to raising those gains up. Advance kind of is the opposite effect of that. If you have advance at zero, then the D term uh, will be, will only respond once the motor starts to spool up for uh, entering a sharp move. So it won't be fighting fee forward or pin. So you should get a sharper response because the D terms will be lower longer when you're entering into a quick stick move. You can raise that advance up to 200. As always, for the best advice and to read all the nitty gritty details about D-Min, uh, Chris did a great write up. It's, this is his baby. On the Betaflight Wiki, you can see all the stuff for D-Min here, background, purpose, will, you know, when will it improve flight performance, so on and so forth. Will it improve prop wash, what advance does, what gain does, and things of that nature. If you are not on the latest configurator, you can always go to the CLI and type in D or get D underscore min, and you can see the CLI variables here. And again, here's your min values, the 20, 22, the gain, and the advance. So one of the next questions is, how do you tune the D min gain, and what values do you recommend, so on and so forth. So um, D min gain, for me, uh, I want prop wash is, I want good prop wash performance. That's a big thing for me. If, if you're a racer and that's not as big of a deal for you, then don't worry about it. I don't want, uh, I, I want everything, right? I want great prop wash performance. I want no bounce back and um, yeah. So what you can do to set your gains is really want to get them kind of as high as possible. I haven't messed with yet. I mean, really you can set your, 
your max D gain, these values right here, the 35 and 38, you could really crank those up, honestly, because most of the time it's going to be down at 20, 22, or whatever you have the low thresholds at. It's only going to bounce up based on how aggressive you have that gain value, that 35 value that I have here. The default, I think, is 25. I bounce it up to 35 for a little bit more aggressive prop wash. And I think the, the value could be even higher on that gain. So how do you know where that gain value could be? Well, it's all really going to matter on how much, how noisy your quad is. You know, if you, you want to get your filter set so you have, you know, things squared away filter wise so there's not a ton of noise, uh, especially down low, uh, below 80 hertz. If you have a ton of noise down there, that's going to really play havoc. How you can get a really a good handle on where your D, your dynamic D values are now is you can set your debug mode so you can type in get debug and then type in set debug underscore mode equal and then you can set it to this value D min. Now let me show you a log of that. So then your debug traces you will get and you can see debug 0, 1, 2, and 3. On 2 and 3 you get the roll and the pitch axis and they're off by one kind of decimal place I would say. So this is 29.4 and this is 22.2. So um, you can see here for a majority of this flight if I kind of zoom out and look at the whole flight here you can see for a majority of it these are down you know at lower values only during sharp stick inputs do they spike up or during prop wash events these are actually prop wash events right here I'm doing a uh, uh, split S right and flipping over and then and hitting you know going into my prop wash and then those again those values are spiking up you can say well what are they spiking up to and you can kind of look in here and see that so that is great uh, for black box that's what I would recommend doing you know here that's what tells me that hmm, I could probably you know even get more advanced on that and take mine up to like maybe 40 see what it does but obviously the higher you get that gain it might you know if I go up to 50 60 or I don't even know what the max gain is I'd have to look but if you go too high on the gain it will just always be at the max values all the time so that's not kind of what you want so you you know you have that flexibility there to, to play with it and if you're not into black box what you can do is go into your OSD and there is a debug mode right here you can see it when I highlight that up top there it's right here you can check that on and put that at the top and what that will do is you know this is debug mode 0 1 2 and 3 right there at the top and that will then record you know you go set the debug mode like I just showed and then you'll see it in your DVR now during flight you're probably a little busy so you might not get an opportunity to take it but you can you know look at the DVR and go through and kind of look at that and post at it you know you can use a free program here like hip film express for example and just kind of go through that frame by frame and you can kind of see as I'm coming down into this prop wash here my D min is raising up to 31.7 this uh, the pitch is going up to uh, 27.9 so I glossed over one thing in those for, you know, how do you know what debug 0, 1, 2, and 3 even mean? Well, I created this uh, on the Betaflight Wiki. There is now a debug modes under tuning tips, and you can click on that. And what I'm trying to do is all the debug modes I know of, or as things come around and change, I go record them in there. So you can um, go into there and go down to daemon right here, and you can see debug 0 is the stick movement, debug one is the derivative of the stick movement so that's really you know that's something Chris Thompson was looking at CTZ snooze as he was developing the code and making sure things work right and if there's some glitch in the code we'll be looking at those but for a normal pilot what you can look at here is the roll is the active D term or D gain on roll and the active D gain on pitch there is the Betaflight 4.0 tuning tips and pace you can put in there for if you're more of a freestyle or more of a race pilot, so do check those out. My advice again is to work towards getting a higher D min gain right here, this 30, maybe start 35, 40. Uh, if you have a, a pretty noise free rig, that should work. Um, and then move these, these uh, normal D gains up here at the top up even, because again, they're not, it's not really at those very long you can see it's only little spikes and most of the time it's either at the min values or maybe somewhere in between depends how aggressive you get with the d min gain you can kind of like everything else it's like porridge you want to have just enough but you know not too little not too much you want to have it that during normal flight your 
your active D gain is down near the minimums, you know, the, the 20 and the 22. But soon as you're starting to get fast stick moves or into the slightest bit of prop wash, it's starting to shoot up right away. And that's all controlled by this D-min gain right there. For the advance, I feel like you want to have that for sharp stick feel, you want to have that as low as possible. But if you are getting bounce back problems, then take a look at that and, and use that and maybe bump that up a little bit. I do want to give recognition that the advice here on the wiki does say for an advance of 80 for freestyle and for racing pilots, at least at the date of the creation of this video, they're just leaving it at the default, which is 20. And if I had my hunch, that has to deal with racing pilots wanting a sharper stick input. And even in the wiki, when you look under Demon, it talks about 20 uh, for an advance, not really, it's almost like zero. It's, they're not much, that's not much advance. Um, so racing pilots wanting a more sharp stick response and more, you know, they want that gyre to be tracking closer to their set point. Whereas freestyle, although you still want that, um, you know, it's more susceptible to getting some bounce back issues just because you're, you know, the roll rates are a lot faster. Um, your rates generally are higher, not 600, 400 like racers are more like in the thousands, 1500, stuff like that. And you're more susceptible to getting some bounce back. Honestly, I've left mine at 20. I like the feel of it all, and uh, I didn't notice any bounce back. So, yeah, just just like always, fly to defaults and see how you like that, and then you can tweak from there if, if you even need to at all. Okay, that is it. Hopefully that gives you a good brief on what D-Min is in the new Betaflight 4.0. Thanks again, and I hope this helped.